As we walk along this trail, you may be able to hear a lot of noise around me. I know I hear many birds that are chirping, but there is an animal that as I walk on these cold, muddy trails with my fingers freezing that I'm not seeing. And that would be your reptiles and your amphibians or your herps. These are animals that are called cold-blooded or ectotherm. They cannot get their internal body temperature to be warm enough to function. So when the temperature dips, these animals know, hey, I need to start overwintering in a process called brumation. Well, many other animals don't have to do that. Birds, for example, they might migrate or they might stick around as long as there's food resources. Mammals might just poof up their fur. I have my extra coat on. But these little guys, these reptiles and amphibians, they can't do that. So let's take a look at a habitat that they might live in and some winter science of how these guys overwinter. Now this spot here is a really great one for all sorts of reptiles and amphibians being a stream. In little spots like this where there's all these rocks and downed leaves, there's nice edges of stream banks that animals can hide in and under. We might see a lot, at least in the summer, of reptiles and amphibians. But now that it is cold and desolate, we don't see them anymore. Where do they go? These animals are most likely way underground. In fact, turtles, like your eastern box turtle that would be native here up on land, can dig Others that are maybe aquatic turtles would have the ability to go swim way down into their pond and stay in the nice warm water or burrow into mud to stay warm all winter long. Some can drop their body temperature and then go through almost like a hibernation, but it's called brumation period where their body kind of shuts down um, in terms of their digestive abilities and their metabolic abilities. They don't have to eat at all. They are good to go for that winter time, but they're still, you know, awake, aware. They can feel the temperature to know when it's going to be spring and when they can come out of hiding again. The ground can get frozen. These animals that are going to be digging, they want to go below that frost line. So let's do a little kind of science experiment or observation so that we can see why brumation is so important and why animals would want to dig down deep. For this, you're going to need three water bottles. One is going to be filled with water. One is going to be filled with mud and leaves and water. And we're gonna fill that third bottle with alcohol. I have my three things that we'll need for this little visual aid science experiment here. So now I'm gonna pop these all into my freezer and we'll see in three hours, we'll come back and take a look at the frozen status of these three objects. Let's take a look at how our frozen objects are doing. First, we have the water. Take a look. Okay, well, after three hours, I guess my freezer is not super cold, but you can definitely see the ice formation here. Oh, it is solid. Look at that. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So, outside, when rain is falling, when snow is falling, when there's just these solid areas, solid puddles or ponds, those areas are going to freeze over really quickly and make that habitat very cold and very solid. But you can see kind of that middle area in that bottle there did not actually get to freeze over within that time frame. It's very similar for lakes. Those are areas where the water's pretty deep and pretty wide, 
only that top layer is going to freeze over, allowing that bottom area where there's fish or frogs buried to stay in water that's still water. It's not frozen into ice yet. This is completely thawed. There is no ice in here at all. If you used sugar instead of alcohol, sugar water instead of alcohol, you'll notice probably the same thing. The freezing point of sugar water or alcohol is way lower than it is for normal water. So instead of freezing at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, that temperature now drops, meaning that the outdoor environment to get way colder in order for things to freeze anyway. This kind of works for our own internal body as well. That's going to cool our blood way down, and since there's water in our blood, this increases the chance that we would freeze. But thankfully, those frogs that increase their blood glucose levels now don't have to worry necessarily about their blood freezing because the freezing point goes way down meaning that their ability to stay alive goes way up. All right, it is pretty frozen. And if you look at the top, you can see that it is, it is solid. However, if we kind of pull these chunks of frozen soil away, we can see that there's some unfrozen stuff, some thawed out stuff, way at that bottom there. That's kind of what happens in the real world too. The soil layer is really deep. And while the top that's exposed to the snow, that's exposed to the moisture freezing at contact with the cold air, that stuff might freeze over that top surface. But farther down, it's still okay. That freezing layer hasn't gone all the way down. So if your reptile is able to burrow, able to dig down into the soil, down into the mud, they are going to be able to escape freezing. So next time you go outside for a hike or a walk in the winter and you think about all the wonderful things that are still out here, remember that our little cold reptiles and amphibians are nice and tucked away for the winter season. So keep an eye out in maybe like March or April for those re-emerging reptiles and amphibians that we all love.